Out of the oddly specific 182 cities studied by WalletHub, Charleston, South Carolina just took home the number one spot as the best city to retire to in America. In this video, we're going to discuss what earned us that title and the few categories where we fell short. So first, let's just get this out of the way, how they get to 182 cities and not round it up to 200 or 150. Well, they actually took the 150 most populated cities in America, plus two cities from each state. So when you add all those together, it came out to 182. That's why we have such an odd number. So let's get right into the how they rank these 182 cities. Now, Wallet Hub used four main categories. These categories were affordability, quality of life, activities, and healthcare. Now within these four categories, there was actually a total of 46 subcategories. Now in this video, we're gonna cover those main four categories, each having a total of 25 points in their study. And then we're gonna talk about a few of the subcategories within each one. Some were pretty obscure, like number of book clubs per capita. So we're not gonna get into each and every of those 46 subcategories for you. We're gonna cover the major ones that I feel are important to you. So let's get right into this. And the biggest one, of course, is affordability. And only six of the 46 subcategories fell under this. Of those six subcategories, the one that carried the most weight, a triple weight, was cost of living. And three of the others had to do with taxes. And those are what we're gonna cover, the cost of living and the taxes. When it came to the total ranking in the affordability category, Charleston ranked 21 out of 182. Now, if you talk to a lot of people that live in South Carolina or Charleston, they're gonna think that we were ranked way too high and that it's not that affordable. But what you do need to consider is the affordability of the state compared to the affordability of Charleston. Most places are having Charleston at an affordability of around 109 to 111, with 100 being the national average. So in the grand scheme of things, Charleston is slightly above average on affordability. But when you look at the state of South Carolina, we're seeing the affordability between an 85 and an 88 with an average of 100. So well, nationally, we're not very much above the average cost of living. Charleston happens to be very high above the average cost of living in South Carolina. And this study actually only looked at the city of Charleston and not the surrounding areas. So if Charleston does happen to be a little too expensive for you, then you can always go just a little outside. I have a lot of clients that are retiring and moving to the Somerville area or the Goose Creek area where your dollar stretches a little further, but you're still relatively close to everything that Charleston has to offer and the coast. When it comes to cost of living, the biggest thing in there, your biggest expense most likely is going to be housing. And year to date, in the city of Charleston, we are seeing a median sales price of $523,000. Now again, that's just for the city of Charleston. I had mentioned the other areas outside. When we add those in, that median price actually drops to $418,000. So as you can see, the housing around Charleston is slightly more expensive than most places. And it's because of that that I feel that's why we got that 21 ranking on that. I think if our housing would have been slightly more affordable, we probably could have broken the top 10 especially when you add in our low gas prices and what I'm about to talk to you about next, those are the taxes. When it comes to tax friendliness, South Carolina happens to be a very tax friendly state, especially for seniors and retirees. Now, starting with one of the biggest taxes and that's your property tax, it is in Charleston County an effective rate of around 0.47%. So if we take that $523,000 median price, your property taxes as a primary residence are going to be around $2,500 a year. Now, just so you know, that is just for the primary residence. If you are looking for a second home during retirement and you do decide on South Carolina, anywhere in South Carolina, just mind you that your secondary home 
taxes are going to be about triple that. So just something to keep in mind for your budget. Next on the list is sales tax. Um, in the city of Charleston, sales tax is 9%, but one thing you do need to consider is if you are going out to eat, there is an extra 2% hospitality tax on that for any food or beverage that is consumed on premise. So going out to eat, do budget on paying an 11% sales tax on your dinner. And now let's get into the retirement tax benefits of living in Charleston and South Carolina in general. And the first one is social security. Now, what is very nice in South Carolina, your social security income is non-taxable. So you do get to keep all of that if you reside in South Carolina and make it your primary residence. In addition to that, any taxpayer over the age of 65 is able to exclude $10,000 of retirement income. And while our property taxes are extremely low, as a senior, you could be eligible for the homestead exemption. So if you are over 65 and have been a resident for one full year, you could be eligible to exclude the first $50,000 of your property's fair market value from your local property taxes. So if you have a home that is worth $400,000, you will only be taxed on $350,000 of that. And lastly, on saving money um, and that generational wealth, there's actually no inheritance or estate taxes that are levied in the state of South Carolina. So with most retirees being on a fixed income and all of these savings that you can have in your taxes and your lower property taxes, um, I think this is a great benefit for anyone looking to retire, not just to Charleston, but anywhere in the state of South Carolina. Now, next on the list of major categories was activities. Now, this is actually where Charleston ranked the highest out of all four. We ranked 15 out of 182. Some of the subcategories in the activities category are recreation and senior centers, fishing facilities, golf courses, theaters, museum, and the arts, and back to that oddly specific book clubs per capita. Now, I'm not gonna get super specific into each of these subcategories, but give you a general overview of the activities you can expect to experience if you decide to retire in Charleston. Now, if you enjoy the water, being near the water or on the water, Charleston should probably rank in the top five. And this isn't just because we reside along the coast, we also have countless number of rivers and waterways and tidal creeks and even two giant lakes just north of the city. This gives you so many opportunities, whether it's just to go for a nice walk on the beach, sit on the beach, drop a kayak in, or if you're a boater, there are plenty of places to put your boat in, spend the day, and go fishing. Now, a quick tip about the beaches. Now, our beaches in Charleston are barrier islands. There is one lane in and one lane out from each of the public beaches. So plan accordingly. If you're trying to go to the beach on a Saturday or Sunday early afternoon, you can plan on sitting in traffic much longer than if you went early in the day. The benefit of being retired is you don't have to wait for the weekend to go to the beach. So going Monday through Friday, you're gonna see much less traffic getting there. Just know that you do need to plan accordingly if you've got people in town and you're going on the weekends. In addition to all the outside natural beauty, we do have a lot of arts and history in Charleston. You know, being over 350 years old, there is something to learn around every corner. There are countless art galleries. We have the oldest museum and the oldest theater. And again, enough history to keep you exploring for years to come. And the best part about a lot of this is a lot of it is free. And one of my favorite things to do is to go and just park on Murray Boulevard right down at the tip of the peninsula where parking is free for two hours. You can spend an entire day downtown if you packed a picnic lunch without spending more than 10, maybe $20 if you decided to park in a parking garage. And lastly, let's discuss one of my favorite hobbies that I'm not really good at, which is why it's a hobby um, and not a profession, and that's golfing. Now, in total, within 20 miles of the center of Charleston, there are 32 golf courses. And a majority of these are public or municipal. Now, there is something for every skill level from the Charleston Municipal Golf Course on James Island, all the way out to the Ocean Course on Kiowa, which was the home of the 2021 PGA Championship. Now, I actually just played 
yesterday from filming this video at a charity golf outing at the municipal course, which they just did a few million dollar renovation on. And I have to tell you, it is still one of my favorite, most easily accessible golf courses in the entire area. And the price can't be beat. Now these prices are subject to change, but at the time of this filming, Monday through Friday, playing 18 holes if you're over 62, if you're a city resident, it's only $17 to walk and $37 to ride. Now, if you're a Tri-County resident, it's 30 to walk and 50 to ride. And for any non-residents, it's 60 to walk and 80 to ride. Now, if you're what they consider a super senior, over 90, you get free greens fees all day, every day. And if you have grandchildren that are under 18, they can also play for free. Now, those are the rates at the time of filming for over 62 during the week. Now, they do go up, of course, on the weekends and for people under 62. But here's a pro tip. They do start twilight hours where the greens fees for everyone are significantly reduced. Well, if you want to play later in the day, I suggest get a tea time about 30 minutes before the twilight starts because you've got all these people waiting for these cheap twilight rates to tee off and you can just get right in front of them and there's rarely anyone in front of you playing and you can kind of have the whole course to yourself. And the third category is quality of life. This is actually where Charleston ranked the lowest at a 75 out of 182. The subcategories in here included the mild weather, community, and walkability which, spoiler alert, isn't that great in Charleston, which probably contributed to why we were 75 and not at least in the top 50. So let's start off with the weather because this actually carried the most weight in this category for the mildness of the weather. Now, just to let you know, it does get very hot, humid, and muggy in the summer, but on the flip side of that, we have very mild winter. So you're still going to get four seasons, but what you're not gonna get, especially if you're coming from up north, is months and months of snow. I've lived in Charleston nearly 10 years now, and I've seen snow once. We got about five to six inches a few years back. It shut everything down, and three days later it was melted, and we haven't seen any since. You know, during the summer, your averages are going to be above 83 for your highs, and in the winter, your highs averages are going to be below 65. So while it does drop below freezing occasionally at night, we don't have months and months of cold to where you're trapped in your home. You know, this kind of goes back to the golf courses. I've actually played golf at least once in every month of the year since I've lived here. So growing up in Ohio, like you put your golf clubs away in October and you couldn't bring them out again until April or May. And it's not just the four seasons. Now there is a fifth season here in Charleston, which at the time of this filming, we're right in the middle of, and that is hurricane season, which runs from June 1st all the way through November 30th. Now Wallhub did a separate study on mild weather and they actually studied 600 different cities and Charleston was ranked in the top 27% of those cities. So overall, we have an incredibly mild temperature here. Uh, so if you're looking for hot summers and mild winters with still a little bit of a fall and a spring, Charleston is a place for you. Now, I think just as important as the weather is the next thing, which is the community. Um, if you are retiring and moving, now unless all of your friends are moving with you, you're most likely gonna move somewhere and know very few people. So you wanna have a great community to make new friends in this new phase of your life. Now going to a different publication, Condé Nast, they actually ranked Charleston as the number five friendliest city in America. Um, what speaks volumes for just the state of South Carolina in general is that the number one most friendly city in America was Greenville, South Carolina. So we had two cities in the top five. You know, to me, that would mean that South Carolina is the friendliest state in the country. And with that, gonna make it easier to meet friends. Now, if you're looking for a community to live in, to easily meet friends and have things to do, we have wonderful active adult communities. Um, there's a new one in Summer's Corner called Horizons. There's the Del Webb in Nexton and the Four Seasons by Cahovnanian in Kane Bay. 
and they're actually opening another Dell Web closer to Mount Pleasant. So if you want any more of that information on those um, and what it would look like to either buy a pre-owned or build a home, um, my contact information is below. And while you're at it, go ahead and um, subscribe to my channel and like this video because um, I've got more videos like this coming up for you. Um, but we're gonna continue on with the quality of life and move into that walkability. Now, on walkscore.com, they actually gave Charleston a ranking of 40 out of 100. Now, that falls on the lower end of their car dependent cities. Now, this doesn't mean you can't walk anywhere, but what it means is any errands that you're gonna have to do, you're gonna have to get in the car and go to. Now, I mean, there's plenty of places to walk, plenty of scenery to walk around to get your exercise, but if you're looking for a place to ride your bike to the grocery store, or walk to the grocery store, Charleston probably isn't the best city for you. And finally, we come to healthcare, where Charleston was ranked in the top 50 at 48 out of 182. Now, some of the things they looked at in here were the cost of the healthcare, the hospitals, how many physicians there are per capita. Um, we're not gonna go into each and every specific one of those. One that did stand out that I saw, according to bestplaces.net, was the number of physicians per 100,000 people, and Charleston had 478 physicians per every 100,000 people, where the national average was 210. So we are well above that. And I think one of the reasons is because of our hospital systems. Now, we do have MUSC, which is the Medical University of South Carolina. It's a teaching hospital, their main campus right on the peninsula in downtown. This hospital is consistently ranked as the number one hospital in the entire state of South Carolina. Now, among others, we do have uh, Roper St. Francis, Trident Medical, and the Ralph H. Johnson Veterans Hospital, also downtown right next to MUSC. Now, while we did do well as a city, um, I do want to let you know that as a state, as a whole, Wallet Hub did rank South Carolina 45 out of 50 when it comes to healthcare. Well, I hope you found all this information helpful. Charleston has a ton to offer everyone, whether you're retired or not. Is it perfect for everybody? No. Could it be perfect for you? Maybe. Give me a call and let's chat. I mean, I am available. Just I'll put all my contact information below if you have any questions about what it's like to live here, where you can live, what your budget's going to get you. I'm here to answer all your questions and help you in that research phase to know exactly where you want to be once you retire. Again, my name is Bill Olson. I am your favorite YouTubing Charleston Realtor. And we got this video right here that I really think you're going to enjoy. So go ahead and check that out. I'll see you over on this video. Have a wonderful day.